Alrighty, let us begin. Caffeinated and awake. So this ship is roughly... Let's block out a uh, CR-90 real quick. So this is a bit... Just a bit shorter than a CR-90. So we're just using this uh, for scale. blocked out CR90 I can use. So in the meantime, kind of a thin, narrow ship, fairly detailed geometrically speaking. So let's just start blocking out our ships. So we're going to have on the front that's sort of like this. A, oops. Speaking of which, let's zero this out to... I put my pivot point in the middle. Uh, I guess that's okay. That's fine for now. Actually, no. I want to center the pivot on all of these. Then... Center those. What am I doing? What am I doing? I can just put this in here. That. There we go. Alright, so there's our CR90 for scale. Doesn't really matter how big it is in the 3D realm. Rough way about right. So the CR90 is 190 meters, and the droid frigate is about uh, 120 meters. So we're just going to keep this around for kind of a rough size approximation. What we can do is we can scale this down to to kind of match what we're doing. Actually, scale it up. Excuse me. So the front hall section, this thing, is roughly about a third of its length. It's sort of made in three sections. You've got this front hall piece. And then we've got a central section, which is longer, about as long. the front hall piece, give or take. And then we've got a rear section, which is probably a little bit longer than the front, but only just. So it's 
going to be about like that, but we're going to build a cylinder because it's an engine. Eighteen's probably fine. Mm, let's go to twenty sides. Should be sufficient with smoothing groups. I'll make a copy of that before we do anything else. Okay, and then this is. So yeah, that's going to be about, about right, give or take. If we really wanted to be precise, what we do is we take a box and we would say, let's make the uh, width of it 150, then we'll make a copy and we'll make that width. 120, then we just scale these right down together. So we're really after relative size. one. Oh, hey, G. How's it going? Welcome. Thanks for the lurk, buddy. I'm borrowing your um, collision mesh for the CR90 to use as a scale reference. So scale this down roughly. Don't have to be too precise, but now we've got one ruler at 150 meters and the other ruler, ruler quotation mark, at 120 meters, our supposed cannon length. So now when we do our final detailing, we can make sure that it's the right size. All right, so that's like the super duper rough block out. Now we're gonna get in and start refining some shapes. Introducing a new coder to the team, very cool. Always useful to have those guys around. Real slut that one, yeah. It gets around, doesn't it? Um, I, I'm not sure what the plan is today. I need to go to the grocery store at some point and um, make dinner. But if I have time and I get to it, I will be texturing this ship that I'm making now, either today or maybe tomorrow or at some point this week. Um, and uh, if you're around for that, you can, I'll give you a rundown. Otherwise, whenever works. All right, let's save our thing before we continue here. Let's 
suppose I should update this again and go. Now let's start refining some shapes and getting this to actually look like a spaceship. Usually how I like to work is I like to focus once I get a really rough block out. Actually I can put on the wings. Um, then I like to go in and just like pick one section, one shape and um, refine that down pretty considerably. And then that gives me um, a basis for the level of detail and the scale and proportions for everything else. As right now everything's just sort of a rough working guesstimate of how things will be. Just to give me a, a starting place. And anyway, we've got this wing that sticks off. Or wings, there's one on each side. And then there's some sort of turbo laser or something. We'll just uh, do a really quick little deal of that. It's actually a bit longer, kind of like that. Hangs out the back a little bit. Super rough block out. All right. I don't know if anyone wants this ship, but I thought, oh, looks like a fun little ship to make real quick. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we're going to start on the front third of the ship and get that done and then kind of base everything level of detail and scale wise proportions off of that. So we got a bit narrower than we are now in relation to how tall we are. Just a slight bit. Taper a little bit, not a lot, towards the top. Then, we've got a little bit of a chamfer on here, the top edge. Not too much of one, maybe about like so. Some things we're gonna exaggerate a little bit so that you can see them, because this stuff's gonna be like mostly viewed from really far away. So we exaggerate some of the details just a bit so they actually show up without having to stick your face in things. Good luck with the droid frigate. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, it should be a fun little model to make. Yep, yeah, I'm I'm trying to make ships that are kind of lesser known, kind of weird, because you know, like Star Destroyers and and Mon Calamari and uh, these kind of things are like a dime a dozen. Everybody's got their own versions. Um, so I'm gonna try to focus on stuff that's relatively unknown or that I haven't seen anywhere else or only seen maybe one or two versions of. Hey Dragon, welcome. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Here has um, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to chamfer this a bit. Nothing too fancy, just a small bit of an indentation there, and it's gonna be extruded in. Actually, let's just do that now. Uh, 
I might increase the size of this later, depending on how well it shows up or not. Then, we've got like a section that gets cut out. So we're gonna do that. Start with 3DS being a little bit of annoying. I don't know how to fix this problem where it um, slides in opposite directions yet. I haven't figured that one out, what causes it. Just yet. Still working on it. But anyway, so we're about like that. And then at some point, it's going to do a thing like this. Yeah, again, see, it's treating these as not equals for some reason. So we'll pull this in a bit. This is probably fine. We can adjust this angle later. Then we're going to delete that. Yep, today was not a good day though. Oh no, what happened today? I didn't have the best of mornings today either. But it wasn't a big deal, just an annoying morning. Yes, camera being broken again. There we go. Nope, not quite. See, there we go. On the other side, it wasn't giving me a true orthographic view. I had to rotate the camera for unknown reasons. Another thing I haven't figured out why it does that. And then, uh, we'll probably get rid of actually this as well. What we're gonna do is we'll cap this. Hmm. That won't work very well. We'll have to connect there. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So we're gonna take this and this, and this and this. Sometimes it's a puzzle figuring these out. Bring them down to there.
take me back to perspective. Because orthographic tends to break itself, unfortunately. All right, now there's another section in here, kind of like this. I think it's just a texture thing. But looking at our reference, I think we're gonna pull this out just a bit. Like so. There's a difference in Y coordinates. Yes, yeah. The camera wasn't broken. Verts weren't aligned. The verts, the verts were aligned correctly. The camera was broken because I, if you just flip the camera around, so instead of viewing it from say uh, the left side, if you went around to the right, everything was aligned. It's some weird thing that that I can't figure out why, but the camera in 3DS breaks all the time. It's very annoying. You hurt someone, somebody, physically. It's a long story, so you refuse to type it out, but after that you left class because you were really mad. Well, if they deserved it, don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up over it. But not knowing the situation, yeah, that can be uh, in, in retrospective. But yeah, it's, it's good advice, Geronimo. Yeah, there are very few things in life worth staying mad over. You can spend a lot of time um, fuming with regrets and wishing things went differently, but in the end, the best thing is just to move on. You even yelled at the teacher, you don't regret it. They deserved 100% no regrets? Well, that's good to hear. there. Uh, this bottom panel is significantly different. I'm going to get rid of all this. There's a bottom hall section. And what we're going to do here... Something about like so. these vertices, which you don't need, and we're just going to throw it up into there, well that, and then I think we're going to cap it, we can go in and adjust all this stuff later as we need, I think we're going to scale this down just a, just a tad, these, move these back up. It's a pretty small ship, we don't have to be hyper precise with the proportions and stuff. Besides, no one will, no one will notice if it's imperfect. So we go out kind of like that, and then uh, this section, maybe a little, little small, maybe like so. And then this probably goes out to about the same as that. 
We'll adjust things as we need later. Still keeping it kind of rough right now. So now that, this, and this can be connected. Then, um, looking at it in more detail, uh, the section below is a bit stouter, I believe. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just a perspective thing. We'll leave it be for the time being. I do think I'll end up doing something like that. All right. Let's grab us another one of these. We're gonna reduce our polygons just a little bit. Go down to like 16. Stick this in the middle. Oh, it's the Bane, welcome. Those eyes are terrifying. Oh yeah, yeah, you like that? Um, if you want, Lotor is welcome to use it. It's kind of a weird, a weird ship. I'm just, I just picked it out because it was kind of neat looking and, and unique. And it's something I haven't seen anywhere else in the community. Like, um, like the other things I was working on, the MTC and the uh, Invincible, I'm going to just give out the 3D files to whoever wants them. Or I'll upload them on the community site. Give me a capsule, my very favorite. Okay, so we have some sort of a, a bulb up in here. don't need is probably that many well I don't know 12's fine it's not gonna be an overly polygon intensive ship as it is so what we are gonna do is we are going to get a little stouter like so get in here Fine. Go to here. Extrude that a bit. That's fine. Then delete that. that back a bit, reset our X form, back to our 
polygon. Hit our edge here. Your friend says she's got, or they have your back. She has your back. She knows why you did that. That's good. It's good to have friends that have your back. So this thing's kind of like in there. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Like, like this. Just recenter it. it. Sticks out a little bit. And then there's the same thing down below, but. And then we might put something in here, some sort of detail. It's, uh, Put a greeble in there of some kind. It's kind of dark, we can't really see what's in there. So we'll just throw something basic. Just give it a little geometric variety. This would be a, a high detail zone, so we want we don't want to have too much detail all over the place, although we're a little bit at the whim of the original artist's design. But Ideally, what we want is like pockets of really high detail and then kind of flat areas so your eyes have somewhere to concentrate on and then rest areas while they uh, sweep across the geometry looking for other high detail or while they're being drawn to other high detail areas. So what we're going to do in here... Just throw together some kind of random greeble. We're greebling. Just to give it a little bit of depth. We're gonna go in and clean up all the geometry later. It makes things super efficient. It's just the way I work. Some people like to uh, model everything from the ground up to be super efficient and, and polygon. Uh, efficient and so there's no overlapping uh, faces and everything's connected and the, the mesh is all clean. I don't I don't work like that. I like I'm real sloppy. I, th I throw shapes together and then I go back later once the design, the artistic part is complete, and then um, then I clean it up and make it uh, efficient and nice arguably less efficient time-wise in the long run, but I'm here more for the art, and so I don't want to do anything that disrupts that process. Because so I go back and I tweak a lot of things as I go, and if you make things too efficient, too end product from the ground up, you can end up biting yourself in the foot if you want to change things later. It can be a lot more difficult. So we're going to do something kind of like, like that. Like this shape, for instance, we're just going to build this shape out with uh, its own like standalone object. And then later when I go to clean it up, I'll make this shape actually out of the, the parent shape below it. Actually, before I do that, I want to... It's a small ship, so we don't want anything too crazy. So we're just gonna add in a few, with just a few little raised bumps and uh, and call it good for in here for now. We can always go back in once we do the rest of it and if it needs uh, a rebalance on the details, things taken out or added based on what we get with the rest of the ship, we can always do that real easily. For now, we're just gonna do something like this. 
And again, like these square shapes are super, it's super much more efficient to um, just edit the geometry below them to have those like coming out and be connected, but we'll do that later. Otherwise you end up um, creating a mess for you and a lot of problems down the road with um, UV mapping and texturing and whatnot and problems with shaders and things. All right. That's good enough for now. All right. Then we have another one of these, basically the same kind of shape. It's just slightly smaller, so we'll scale that down by 10%. Rotate that. Might need to play around with the scale a bit more. We're just kind of eyeballing stuff as we go. But it's like here-ish. And is kind of inset into that upper hall panel, or that upper hall segment. It doesn't stick out all that far, so it's going to be kind of like that. Okay, it's likely got one on the other side. We'll clean it up and make it all pretty and connect logically later. Then we have another thing, which is essentially, again, the same shape, although we're going to make the some changes to it. This is much bigger. This is like, this is like 80% bigger. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe it's, it doesn't really matter. It's a precise size, but it's about like so. Enough that the um, edges of this protrusion kind of hang down around it. Speaking of which, we need to cap that off. I may even cut this off a little bit just to have a little bit of geometric detail, but we'll see. Right. However, for this, we're going to make some changes. We don't want to repeat the same shape too many times, even though they kind of do in the design, or the artist did design, but I think we can change this one up a bit back got really bad internet that sucks but at least you have internet maybe you could upgrade and get uh, the Elon Musk internet um, Starlink last time I looked into it it looked pretty reasonable but they're still building the network I think they're not gonna be done with it for a few years one week, five days, and seven hours. Is that a countdown, perhaps? Or a count up until? Okay, so looking at this, I think what we're going to do with this shape is we are going to just pull that down into there, weld all that together. Oops, not that much. Zero, one, there's too many things. And then uh, we might... We're just going to leave it at that for the moment of that part. But what we are going to do is we're going to take this stuff and we're going to pull it back kind of like so. Make its casing different. I don't know what this is. I don't know, an eye or a sensor or something. It's a droid ship, so probably something to do with its command and control systems or its, its perception. It's your birthday countdown. Ooh, coming up. My birthday is also approaching. 
less than a month. Got any uh, special plans for your birthday? Anything neat? Or are you just gonna hang out and chill? I think I'm going to mix up the, the music here in a minute. I like techno-y EDM stuff mostly, but I can't listen to it for all that long. It gets kind of repetitive. Some songs are less repetitive. There is one song, though, I do want to hear. I think it's my favorite song from them that I haven't heard yet. This song, yeah. I like that song. Or this one. Alright, so we're going to play around with some stuff in here a bit. It's a pretty small ship, so we don't want to go too overboard. Just like hints of details, more than actual detailing. Riblets like these is a very polygon efficient way to get a lot of detail out of an area. They don't take up that many polygons because they're basically just squares and rectangles. And they're very easy to build out of other shapes and make them a very efficient um, construct geometry wise. But they add a lot of visual complexity or can depending on how they're used. Okay, so we've got another shape. Let's work on this piece a bit as it's starting to get in our way. So this thing is about here-ish. And then it comes considerably forward of our, our um, panel line or deep line there. Something kind of like up in there. We'll move things around as we need later. Then it comes down like about so. Farther down on the top panel than it is on there. Back. And so our angled piece comes to roughly the middle of this overhang. And then it extrudes out slightly, slightly beyond that overhang, give or take. This is our, our artist's impression of this ship. All right, let's scale that down just a tad. And then we're gonna put on some chamfers and stuff. Then there's like a section in here that extends out and connects these two. And this is gonna be real thin. Or not real thin, just thinner. It's an inset area. And it 
who seeds out about like so. Then there is actually this is probably about equal with that. Then there's another thing that kind of comes up off of that. And that goes into this, which is some sort of maybe a heat sink or, or a pulsar field thing or a shield bubble piece. I'm not sure what it is. Sort of a weird grilled object that kind of sticks off and it kind of floats above the rest of the ship. I think it's just slightly larger than the forward hull sections. And it is perhaps just slightly raised above them. It's also fairly thin, or thin-ish. Something like that. And then there's another little detailed bit. I'll just copy that. like that. It's also chamfered. We'll figure that out later. In theory, I think it actually overhangs. So it's a little wider than this piece and or this piece is just a little bit skinnier. It's kind of like that-ish, give or take. Starting to refine the shapes a bit. Getting there, getting there. Raspberry Lime Seltzer. It's way different than you're used to. Is it a different brand or is it just like, a, did they change up their mixture ratios or just have an inconsistent batch? Raspberry Lime. Hmm. It's a pretty exciting flavor. sent me.
right, all right, all right. Uh, let me change up mm -mm, the music. It's really sweet, the taste. Hmm. Let's let's listen to mm. or excuse me, I'm gonna listen to something and you're just gonna hear me listening to something. Just like if you were my neighbor. All right. Um. I want. I want. Different brand. You just glitched a game you're playing to get a crown? What game are you playing? We're gonna chamfer. We're gonna chamfer this stuff as well, although before, no, we'll, we'll do that afterwards. We're going to champ for that, and I think we're going to champ for down here as well. Not quite as extreme, but a bit like so. Actually, yeah, we're going to do that, and then I think we're going to scale it down just a bit more again just just a little bit like so recenter that right okay then we'll keep adding a little bit of detail this has some little fins or ribs that stick off equally spaced. We might end up chamfering this edge here, but we'll see how it goes. Something like that. This section in here, I do believe, gets inset a little bit, and then we're going to extrude that in there just a bit, and we'll put some sort of dark texture in there. It'll mostly be in shadow. All right. Um, then we'll do the bottom piece. We're just going to actually copy this top piece again. And redo that section that sticks out. I think that'll be less work than rebuilding the protrusion. Considerably less work.
evil new face. Uh, but why? Scale it back down a little bit. Basically, just repeating what we did earlier, and then extrude it out. Because it is also chamfered, and probably just easier to do it this way. So it's going to come out maybe about. Uh, actually, 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 we got this a little bit wrong. This is considerably shorter. This ends like here, maybe even just a little before. Then this comes out to maybe here. And then goes to, I don't know, maybe about there. And then we'll clean up this geometry at another point. This is a little bit cleaner to do, like so. Actually, it might be worthwhile just detaching it, but we'll play around with that uh, later when we go to clean things up. Roughly like so that and in fact I think this is going to be let's see if I can get it to no it's not gonna work pulled up a bit like so Box Boy. I have never heard of Box Boy. Just a demo, but you're buying the game. You liked it. What is uh, what happens in Box Boy? We'll make this uh, less steep of an angle at some point, but for now, we're happy with that. Mm, no, we're not. We're going to pull it up a little bit more. Okay. Uh, then we're going to copy this stuff. Probably just attach those things together. Deleted and rebuilt later anyway. Right, roughly like that. All right, pardon me for a minute while I go grab a drink of water.
Can't find my hair tie. Where is my hair tie? Guess this one will have to do. Ooh. Okay, I have returned. I am back. Uh, a puzzle game with cute characters. All right. And hello, IXFX. Welcome. Welcome back, I should say. Is it on the Steam? We'll have a look. It doesn't appear to be on the Steam. Is it a console game? Or is it on a different platform other than Steam? Like everyone's favorite, the Epic Game Store. Down here on the bottom of this, we got what could be can what is this armed with? Let's see. Maybe I should look at that. It is armed with two turbo lasers, two heavy ion cannons, two assault concussion missile tubes. So it's got six things. I'm assuming the turbo lasers are the giant guns on the wings. The ion cannons then are probably these things that stick off the bottom. The missile launcher tubes are nowhere to be seen, so we'll just put those in somewhere. Maybe we'll stick them off the bottom and they can come out. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where we have space. Now we'll do this. So this is going to end roughly about equal with this piece. Then it sticks out about halfway. It doesn't stick out all that far from the hall, just a little bit. It's actually chamfered, and it probably doesn't stick in past there doesn't stick very far down below the hall either. It's probably about like so. Burr. It's cold. It's a Nintendo game. Okay. No wonder I have not seen it. You wish you could play Red Alert 2 multiplayer? I believe you can. But it has been a while since I've played it. But last time I did it was working. It's probably um, coming up pretty soon for a remaster as well, and I'm sure they'll make sure the multiplayer works if it currently doesn't. The Nintendo 3DS, but the Switch has Box Boy and Box Girl. Oh, I see. It's looking good. Thanks. We're coming along. We're getting there. We're buying it for $8. Well, let's see. I do not have Nintendo anything, but we'll look at the game real quick. 
and see what you're see what you're up to here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it is it's like a puzzle platformer. Kind of a deal. Okay, okay, okay. What's well, a cute looking game? Looks pretty relaxing. This is going to be something uh, kind of like that. And then uh, let's make us a gun. Nothing fancy. No cylinder. Uh, let's go with six sides. I mean, there's like more to this, but we'll get there in a minute. And then this gun is not going to be particularly fancy in any way. Um, gee, that's about the right size. We're going to pull it out a bit. Some things we're going to exaggerate just a little bit, so it's easy to see them, but it's a pretty basic thing. That might be too much chamfer. Too much cone. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, I like that. We'll go in and spice this thing up in a bit. We're gonna bring in another shape because there's more to this.
this is going to go to about the end of here, roughly, and then this is going to be a chamfer. This is fine. No. Um, we're going to make it so it sticks out a little bit less. And by that, I mean considerably. As well as it doesn't stick down as much. And then we're going to chamfer down here as well. Ugh, my Google phone just updated, and I hate it. I want I want the old operating system back. They've ruined it. Android version twelve. Ugh. Can I go? Can I go back? Although it's still changing things. Hmm. We'll see what it ends up with. It's not an easy game. You try to get all the crowns in the demo, but you really gotta use your brain. Well, that's good. Games that make you think are probably the best games of all. They exercise your cognitive capacities in any way. Otherwise, they're not much better than, say, television. So we have a thing here that comes off of this, like perhaps a bit like that, and then comes down perhaps to there. And this might do a very similar thing. Let's pull it up a bit. Like so. Set that X form, convert it back to a poly, and then more chamfers. Lots of chamfers on this one. We'll go in and clean clean it up uh, later. But for now, this is more or less what we get. Probably use 
I think slightly less on the chamfer. Like so. Okay. All right, that's m mostly, I think, the front section, like 95% done. Um, still gotta figure out what we're doing here with the central area. Probably want to cap that. The um, this cylinder in the middle is just sort of here. It doesn't need to be per se. There's just all we can see is that there's darkness here. So what we could do, we just threw something in. But what we could do is perhaps blow this up just a bit, like so. And then once everything is being optimized for efficiency, we'll center all this stuff and uh, and then we'll connect it in there somehow. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But it's still a pretty small ship, so it doesn't doesn't really need anything too dramatic in there. Okay, so moving on towards the rear, or moving to the rear, we've got this thing. Before I do that thing, let's work on this section. So this isn't really, this is just a block to represent there is stuff here. What we do have, though, a piece. I'm going to make you thinner. And we're going to make you slightly fatter. All right. And so this piece has kind of offset. Um, might rest. Actually, it rests about even with this. I think that's slightly too tall. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this, and we're going to bring you down to be even with that. And then this piece... is going to end roughly about there. It's going to have a connection there. It's a bit of a narrow, narrower piece than it is. Uh, wide, so in order to represent that, I think it goes to about here-ish. Then we get it thinned down a bit like that. Yeah. Give or take a bit like that. Then this is more like that. There's like a big bulbous thing that the wings stick out of.
Okay, okay. Pretty happy with the proportion of this piece, so we're gonna go ahead and refine it. So, uh, with this piece, it's gonna, of course, get the obligatory chamfer. Everything on this ship is chamfered, it gives it that sleek look, I guess. And then, and then it's gonna get bunch of stuff cut out about like so I'm not really sure if cut out is the right word but there's gonna be like an extrusion Then take this and we're going to actually I didn't really need to do that. That's fine. We'll clean it up later if we want. We're gonna go three of these and do zero on that. And we're going to pinch. No, they're fine. And then we're gonna champ for those, which are gonna turn them into things we can indentate. Boop, boop, boop. Perfect. And then extrude. Change our extrusion type. Tuck us in. Perfect. I looked at the Switch version. I might want to look at the uh, 3DS one. All right, I'll have a look at that in a bit here. Uh, Goose, thanks for the subscription. Very much appreciate the support. So, uh, fun fact. So I was up north um, hanging out with the, the parents for... Um, Thanksgiving and my father who is like 80 he's like 78 but whatever he wants to stream now but he's a he's an oil painter and he used to paint miniatures professionally not like the kind of miniatures you see in war games but like um, collectors miniatures um, So he wants to do that since he's retired. He used to paint stuff like like this, um, like Napoleonic figures and scenes. He's he's very very good at it. Um, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's pictures of any of his work anywhere though. But yeah, stuff like this. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm gonna uh, write up a um, a document for kind of like how to get started because they don't really know much about it other than they watch it a bit, but the technical side of how to do it, they're not familiar with. But anyway, I thought that was funny. And uh, they also want to buy me a webcam, sort of, kind of. They gave me money for one as a like a birthday Christmas present. So I'll be ordering one of those at some point. And then if I ever get a second one, then I'll probably do like miniature painting myself as well.
Yep. Good old fashioned name chase. I, I, I had no idea who it was at first. After she changed her name, I didn't know, right? And she comes in and, and texts and texts this new name that I haven't recognized, but it didn't give me any, the usual, like, first message notifications. I was really confused over who it was for a moment. Sub to all your favorite streamers, right? That happens probably all too often. Live a little. Such a bad influence. All right. This piece is also, unsurprisingly, chamfered. On the top, at least. The bottom is not. But it's kind of part of the, the look of the ship. Have all these chamfered edges. Shit, look at that. Thank you, sir. And keep this up and you're gonna overtake Yang. Surely this won't hurt. <laughs> it's for a good cause. It is the holidays, and the the holiday spending commences, where it's going to commence. Like, uh, so my girlfriend's going to go on a two-week road trip down to Vegas with, uh, with her girlfriend. And so I got her a new phone to take. So she has a, a new phone and doesn't have to rely on her, her old one for that. That was an expense. Not sure what I'm going to get my parents yet. I'll probably end up going back up home for Christmas. And so if I'm there, I'll definitely have to get them a, a presence, presence of some form. Or I don't know, maybe my present will be getting them set up in the, getting their, their Twitch stuff all set up for them. Spend a few days doing that.
Ooh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. You also bought a new phone and haven't received it. That's right, and your birthday's coming up too. What phone did you get? As well as your exhaust system, air intake, and grill? Oof. Yeah, those aren't cheap either. So there's like a wing that sticks down from this as well, or a fin even. I'm not sure how thick it is. I don't think it's particularly thick. Something kind of like that. Oof. You got an S22 Ultra Samsung. Are you counting it down by the hour? You can have a, you have like a notebook. And every hour you write the time down. big boy phone look at that look at all those cameras what are you gonna do with all those cameras holy crap like what do you what do you do with all that it's got like five cameras on the front tell me the stats <laughs> 100 times zoom right all right, show me this and show me the stats. I guess the 128 gig is not so bad. Um, key features. 
the real metal finish. Wow. Space to zoom. New dual zoom lens system is faster and sharper than any zoom before. Well, I'd hope so with, with five of them. Featuring a 10 megapixel dual telephoto lens. Cubed. Squared. Cubed. Cubed. No. Uh, what's four? Squared is two. Cubed is three. Four is something else. An enhanced super resolution. Ooh. It even has a zoom lock feature, so you can stabilize shots while zooming well. New zoom up to 100 times of clarity and precision. High resolution, 108 megapixel sensor gives you the highest resolution possible on a smartphone. Light. 8K video, Jesus Christ. Record video, twice as large as anyone actually can reasonably display. You're, you're future-proofing yourself there. Those, uh, those 8K videos in 20 years, they're gonna be something. Well, that's a that's a beast of a phone, and and being able to take awesome photographs is is neat as well. Because I, you know, I I like taking photographs, but I don't have a digital camera I carry around. But I do have a phone, right? So um, having a really awesome camera on your phone can be really really handy, especially if you live in a scenic area or go driving around and exploring and whatever. Definitely more useful than a lot of features that come on cell phones these days. Well, of all those lenses, you probably can get some really sweet colors out of like sunsets and things too, or take really awesome like misty photos. And with winter, you're probably gonna have a lot of really cool misty days. Your box boy finished uh, downloading. No. Soon, one day. Maybe not even today. All right. So what do we have in here? We've got like a. Like a cylinder. Not a cylinder, a, well, a cylinder might work. Let's grab our engine here. It's a reasonable amount of faces. Uh, rotate this around, because we don't really need it to be like a fancy thing. Because it's just like, a, like a beveled edge. And it's more of an egg shape, so we'll put that in for the moment. And then we got some other shapes to kind of ground us. Guide us. Because round shapes are really difficult for me to um, pin down proportion-wise. So we have a thing kind of like here, and this is basically the middle, it's the wing. And that thing are all going to be aligned with that on the z-axis. And, I, you know, I imagine it comes out the other side as well. And then there's also another, another thing. It's kind of big and comes out the top. And it's pretty wide. And it's going to be aligned on the X 
x-axis, like so. And then all of this is going to get pushed back to, like, here. Be right back. All right. You're buying it. Uh, what does that mean? T M R W. Uh, oh, tomorrow. Okay, yes. Watch Box Boy? Where am I watching Box Boy? Are you gonna stream Box Boy? Can you stream Nintendo y things? seen from this um, we're gonna pull this out a bit and that's probably just gonna be like that that's fine and then the shape is actually about right for the wing although what we're gonna do is we're going to thin it a bit down and then it's gonna stick out a bit like here Then it's going to get, we'll pull this one because it's got less polygons. No capture card. Uh, that is unfortunate. I'm gonna scale that up a bit, just a little bit like so. And then. say it's about like something that we're gonna scale it up a little bit like that. Good enough. We can adjust it later as we see fit. Then we're gonna do a little bit of a bevel on each. Like that. Perfect. Alright, then this gun is sort of like a banana-shaped kind of thing. Well, not, not really a banana-shaped thing, but you get the idea. It's like a... It looks like the homeworld ship is what it looks like. So we'll just use this shape for now. Pull it out just a bit so it's off the hall. Probably so it can gimbal a little bit. And then we are going to center this to the wing on the Z. Yep. Cool. And then we're going to go and we're going to pull out this a bit like that. And then we are going to pull it back 
like so. And then we are going to chamfer once again. I'm going to do a fairly dramatic chamfer like that works for us. Um, then you're going to go watch Outer Banks. That's also a thing I don't know. Well, thank you for stopping by and chit-chatting. I hope you have a better rest of the day than your day started out. It's still chilly and my fingers are cold. They are so cold. Let's proceed. Um, we're gonna do a another cylinder that is six sided, and we'll just smooth it later manually. Listen to this all the way through. Maybe we may have listened to this like three times. Uh, let's switch it up to uh, the rebirth soundtrack extended. Yeah, this is a good one. After the song is done, remind me. Remind me. There are oh, lots of conversations I need to read real quick. just had a problem that was strange my keyboard lights just turned off and my computer froze for a moment i hope everything's still all right all right i said i was going to change after that song i don't know maybe that song's still going it's still going um mm -mm -mm. reading the messages Still going, still going through the messages. Still going through the messages.
remembered it. Okay. Now I am done reading the uh, pile of messages. Got to keep on top of those things because uh, you look away for too long and all of a sudden there's like 500 messages that you got to read. It's take forever to get through them. Alright. Okay, uh, what we're gonna do is... Interesting take on the soundtrack. sort of like that. We're going to do a little more with it, but that's a start. Uh, we're going to do a cutout, so we're going to start by connecting this. at the moment. Um, I do think we are going to pull that back a bit and extend that. Mm -mm 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 okay. Um, and then on the wing, it doesn't really have a lot going on geometry-wise. There's like a, a winglet thing that comes up here. Not a winglet, but like a raised area. We can do that. Actually, it's very much... Um, it's very much similar in shape. Not really, but it's just a, it'll make a cleaner, cleaner model. And you know what? 
I'm gonna be right back. I'm going to go turn up the heat just ever so slightly. My fingers are getting cold, and when my fingers are cold, with those bad things. I have returned. Let us proceed. Um,
deal with this. So first thing, um, you know, actually, actually, what we, we can indeed do what we were thinking, which is to pull this back like so. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. Um, so this thing is going to be... It, it looks like an oval in the artwork. It may very well be. However... It is going to be larger. Um, we're going to leave it as a circle for now, and we can always make it an oval later if we want. But for now, it's going to be like a thing like that. Mm, it might need to be an oval. We have reports of an outbreak of argon flu in the sector. Would all visitors please report to the medic bay for inoculation? They made that announcement before the coronavirus. It's awfully fitting now. All right, so we're just gonna do do that for now. And then we are going to go up there, we're gonna bring that to here. This is gonna get, of course, but we're gonna play around with it a bit manually here. It gets pretty thin towards there. Yeah, about like so. That really might need an extra polygon or two. What was that? That was, uh, 20 polygons, might go to 26. Might just show up too much. This is a similar shape to that, although it's considerably thinner. I mean, not considerably, but... Well, seeing as we were on a trip for a few days, we we're very much out of groceries, so my breakfast has consisted of a fistful of nuts and apricots, and I am <laughs> quite hungry. I don't know if this is meant to like rotate or not. I don't I don't think so. It's possible, but I don't believe it is supposed to rotate.
connects the wing to this thing. that underneath. Is there anything that we want to do with the gun? Um, yeah, I think I think it needs a little a little extra something. Not necessarily the gun, but this. Needs something kind of that perhaps. Alright. Then we're gonna take that and that. Now, this cylinder doesn't really have anything to connect to on the bottom of the ship, so there's nothing that protrudes down here. Um, so we're probably going to just extrude the cylinder and see how we like having um, roughly a bit like so and we'll clean it up later because there's going to be one mirrored on the other side um, and see how we like having like a cylinder down there and so we can do the same thing with this. In the absence of anything else, I think this is fine. I mean, our, our problem arises because, partially, in part, because I think these are really supposed to be more of an ovoid shape, but it just doesn't really work out that way with the way we're doing things. But that's fine. All right, well, here we are. We're about... That's pretty much it for the... Um, middle third we're left with the rear section the rear third the engine module so to speak
and then it will be on to some little final scaling and proportion and detailing adjustments and then then it will be on to cleaning it up and optimizing the model and the mesh rather and then probably tomorrow because I gotta go to the store and do dinner stuff later tomorrow we will texture the ship it's a little small thing, so uh, probably a single 1024 texture will do just fine. I'm not sure if I'm going to mirror it or not, as you really don't want to have a small ship have too much texel density or too high of a resolution texture or it will stand out from the rest of the ships that are larger and aren't as space efficient. Okay. Let us work on the engines. So there isn't really a thing like this. This was kind of just a block out that says there's stuff there. But in reality, we just have our big engine module and then some stuff underneath it, some infrastructure. And then there's like another engine module below, although smaller. So um, I think what we're going to do It's kind of a strange shape. Uh, let's start with, there's like a triangle piece that goes from here into the engine module. Might be fun to do some Babylon 5 stuff at some point. I'd love to model a couple of Narn ships. I always thought they were super cool. Alright, so I think we'll have it emanate from here. Um, then, This engine module is sort of in a bunch of different pieces, so what we're going to do is make a couple of copies here. Let's 
so up here we've got a much smaller segment. This is big, really big. Thank you. Amongst a small segment kind of protruding off of a larger segment with a another smaller segment. So we'll get our segments kind of aligned here. Kind of like so. Alright. And then we're gonna say This shape is going to be a lot smaller. Well, not a lot, but like kind of like that. This is also going to be smaller, not as small. It's going to like taper down into a cone. Okay. And then, if we were to reposition this height-wise. It's going to be about like so, because that we can make this taller, shorter as we need. But I think I think what we're going to do is we're going to make the engine segment no higher than the highest part, like so. Very nice. Okay, um, I think I'm going to put a little pipe in there while I'm thinking about it. I kind of like the idea of doing that. Little pipes can go a long way. Let's not. Uh, towards adding a lot of visual interest. We don't want anything too extreme. Just a just a simple little probably ninety degree bend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, take that, take that.
optimize this a little bit later, but for now. Something kind of, kind of, sort of like that. It's just to give a little, little something in there. Not trying to do anything too fancy with it. It's part of that Star Wars, uh, like, Greebles on the outside style. This just keeps getting better. will come in handy later because there's going to be some engine infrastructure that we're going to deal with. But, okay, so for now, this thing needs a big change made. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and this. Something uh, kind of like that. There is a single light of science, and to brighten it anywhere is to brighten it everywhere. Uh -huh. This is probably the primary engine. And then there's a couple little secondary things down below.
let's inset that a little bit and bevel it out. Inset it again, just a small bit, and we'll bevel it towards the inside there. Okay, um, now, there's a little detail up here. starting to feel tired so this morning I was very rudely awakened well before I normally get up I normally wake up at like 11 something like 11 30 but I was very annoyingly woken up by the fucking leaf bro blowers of the landscapers for the neighborhood, and it wasn't just it wasn't just the uh, the sound of the leaf blowers, which are like right outside my window, for hours, mind you, but also the the fumes because they're all gas powered monstrosities. I was so awful. They started at like maybe seven thirty in the morning. It was very annoying. A cylinder down in here of some form. We have one of these. And we'll go down to 16. It's more of a piece that goes in between all this stuff to tie it together. This thing, I think, has...
Time is the fire in which we burn. And we are going to rotate 180 and rotate 90. Yeah, but anyway, I'm starting to feel it because I went to sleep at about 3 a.m. And then that was when I went to bed. And I probably fell asleep at maybe 3.30 to 3.45 a.m. And then being woken up at... Sometime between 7 and 8. What, well, leaves me with 4 hours of sleep? Don't... Do this. Sorry, my phone apparently part of Google's Android 12 operating system is to bombard me with advertisements, which I'm very not pleased at. It does not feel like an upgrade to me. It feels more like reasons that I shouldn't buy an Android phone in the future. So we got this, um, oh, this, right. So this is really actually much more like, like here. All right, all right, we're, we're approaching there. We're getting towards the final stretch. Down here. section. And we're 
looking at something kind of quiet. Ending somewhere kind of like here. I might have to call it at some point in the nearish future because I'm starting to get pretty tired. Getting there. see so I think we're gonna do a little thruster cone down there as well um, it's pretty small so we'll go with maybe 12 sides should be okay Less polygons, but we'll just throw that in there. Um, okay. So here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take this, and we're gonna take this, and we're going to go roughly here, and we're gonna do the same with this. So we'll clean it up and make it all pretty full and stuff later. For now, that gives us a thing to work off of. And, um, <laughs> twelve is fine. Hey, hey, Mr. Nin, welcome, welcome in. Um, it is a uh, droid frigate um not in that it has droids operating it but in that it is a droid uh it is roughly a little bit smaller than a cr90 corvette the rebellions blockade runner thing um it is a little bit shorter than one Actually, we're supposed to be exactly this long. We'll have to do a few adjustments with that short, excuse me. We'll do a few adjustments in a bit. But, um, yeah, it's a, a little tiny droid frigate. I thought it was kind of a 
cute little thing I could do um, whip up pretty quick in a day. At least the model, but I'm pretty busy later today. So I'll probably texture it tomorrow or, or Wednesday or whatever, but the model I think I'll have done today. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. I don't, I don't even know where it's from. Uh, it is from one source, which is Star Wars droid starships, which is a book. It's an article written in a magazine. <laughs> it's a, it's like a weird non, non thing. Like, so this magazine had an article about droid starships and I guess in that article about droid starships was th this but uh, I thought it was a neat little thing that I could just whip up so why not and I prefer to do models of ships that aren't dime a dozen so I don't think anyone has ever remotely even considered making a model of this and putting it in a mod. But uh, I will make I will make the model, and then I will um, I will give it out to the community as a freely release. I am I am so tired. I'm starting to fade. I ranted about this a few minutes ago, but um, I was rudely awoken today, awoken, awakened um, by the neighborhood um, landscapers um, because maybe two or three times a week they have to come with their leaf blowers, their gasoline powered leaf blowers and for hours like literally like like four hours um they leaf blow the alley behind my house and it is the loudest most obnoxious thing because there's two of them of course because one won't do and a rake won't do i guess and uh, if it's on top of the sound since they're they're gasoline powered they're just pouring out gasoline fumes exhaust which of course i have the windows open in my house for both fresh air and to keep it cool um, because we like to sleep in cooler temperatures and so i have gasoline fumes pouring in and there's and it's obnoxiously loud and they started at like seven in the morning which is rudely too early like yeah i get it still like stuff in the morning starts in the morning but don't do it at seven in the morning wait till like nine um and on top of that i didn't get the sleep till maybe 3 30 in the morning so i only got maybe four hours of sleep in total I was doing pretty good. I was doing really good until about maybe a half hour ago, and uh, and I'm definitely starting to crash now. I am losing concentration and um, forgetting what I'm doing repeatedly. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, I don't really. I didn't really intend to do a particularly long stream today because um, just coming back from the Thanksgiving trip, we have no no food in the house. We ate everything before leaving, um, so the refrigerator is empty and the cupboards are empty. At least everything that was perishable and generally yummy to eat in the first place. Um, 
so I gotta go to the store. That's the, the, in, in, long story short, I gotta go to the store in a while to get groceries and get stuff to make dinner. So basically, I'm just doing this until the girlfriend gets home from work and then we'll probably go to the store shortly after that. Because there literally isn't anything to eat. I think there's, there's half a package of pot stickers in the freezer. And, uh, and like a bag of carrots in the refrigerator, and that's kind of it. Slim pickings. Anyway, that's my half asleep rant. Other than that, we're doing pretty good. Uh, I had a very good Thanksgiving. Um, how about yourself? Yeah, you'd think... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, you'd think droid starships would be very efficient, and they've shown in Star Wars, especially in, in canon as well, that um, droid intelligences can handle um, being things like like starships. Like we had the droid gunships that were pretty effective at their job and whatnot. So yeah, imagine whole whole ships that are just droids. Certainly um, save you a bunch of bunch of cash. And uh, biological crews certainly have a lot of requirements to keep them alive and healthy, so you're saving a lot. Although I do believe in the article it says that the uh, ship was made so that it could have biological crew on it. Or inside of it. If they wanted. But I just sort of glanced at the article. I'm not 100% I'm not on that. But I think it said so. It said something like of that nature. Uh, hello, Bobby. Welcome to our. Um, welcome to our half asleep stream today. is yourself. Today we are uh, making the XX-777 prototype droid frigate, um, which I'm designing to work uh, as an Empire or slash maybe other things asset. Um, I probably won't get to the texturing today because as I mentioned earlier, I go to the grocery store in not too long from now and do dinner stuff after that. But perhaps tomorrow or Wednesday, I will texture it. Right now we're just in the doing the design stuff, so we're roughing out the shapes, getting the details done, basically working out the geometry of the ship, and then I'm gonna go back in and, and clean everything up and make it uh, a super tight and efficient mesh. And then after that, I'll do the texturing stuff. And then after that, I'll, I'll upload it to the Empire at War community and they can do whatever they want with it, use it or not, up to them. But I figured it was kind of a neat little ship I could whip up real quick um, for fun, mostly. 
and uh, and it's something that I haven't seen anyone else do. I don't like to do the stuff that you you see people or you, that you see everyone doing. I don't, I don't want to do like another Star Destroyer because there's like 50 of those. No one needs another Star Destroyer. But perhaps somewhere in someone's vision, they need one of these. But I think um, we're pretty happy with the, the geometry. It's a pretty small ship. Like, here's the CR-90 for scale comparison. Uh, the CR-90 is 150 meters long, I believe. And the droid frigate here is supposed to be about... Um, supposed to be about 120 meters long, supposedly. So a little bit shorter in the CR-90. But, uh, yeah, we're not trying to go too overboard with the details on the ship because it is a small ship. And in-game, it's not going to be viewed from particularly up close. So now we're just... Uh, we're actually like pretty close to wrapping up the design phase of things here. We're just kind of looking for any issues that need to be fixed or any proportions that need to be adjusted or anything like that. Anywhere where the design language doesn't read very well, or where I need to add or subtract detail, that kind of thing. But I think we're pretty happy with it. Um, I might add something up in here just to um, add an area of, of high detail. Because what you want to do, you want to balance between high and low detail. So you have like an area of high detail for the eyes to sort of naturally coalesce on. And then you have areas of low detail which give rest to the eyes. And that way they're not overwhelmed. And that helps uh, the read of the, of the design. And so we got some high detail stuff in here, kind of this T shape. These hall panels are kind of a low detail rest area, but we need something to kind of draw your eyes back towards the center area and to kind of balance out these engine details. We're going to put something up in here. Something similar to this shape, but flatter and stouter. And I think we're going to do sort of a ribs, a riblet kind of a deal. Uh, which is also appropriate for a droid ship as that kind of makes things look a little more skeletal even if it's like literally just adding material to it it, it kind of gives it that look um, which is good for a droid ship to have but we're just kind of playing around with it. So we'll see what we get. We might not like it, might remove it. But we'll add some on there and see uh, see how we like it. Um, let's see. Uh, watched elf eating ham and turkey, stuffed casserole, and some veggies. I also had a ham and a turkey. For Thanksgiving. I had ham at the girlfriend's house and I had turkey at my parents. And of course the obligatory vegetables, the required vegetables. You like the general look of the ship? Um, yeah, I think it's actually a fairly attractive design. All things considered. It's, it's sort of, like it's not super Star Wars-y. Um, and considering that it was a design made for a magazine, they probably just uh, hired out some random artist somewhere to whip it up for them real quick. But I still think it's a solid design. And um, with the right texture work, we can make it fit even better with the rest of the Star Wars ships. The CR-90 is the first ship ever sewn from Star Wars? Uh, yes. Maybe. 
Is it? Or is it the Star Destroyer chasing it? I don't know. It, it's probably the, the CR-90. The, the Tantive 4 or 5. I forget what number it is. Yeah, I think we're pretty happy with the design. Um, so the ship has two turbo lasers, which I assume are the big big cannons on the side, of sticking on the wings. And it's got two ion cannons, which I'm assuming are these two guns that kind of stick off the bottom. And it has two concussion, concussion missile launchers, which aren't apparent on the design. Um, so maybe they're down in here, maybe they come out of here, I'm not sure yet. Maybe they come out of here or out of here. I haven't figured that one out yet, but it's not super critical. A ship this small doesn't really need visible hard points so much, at least in terms of the missile launchers. The particle effects from the, like, the smoke of the missiles that most mods use will hide where they emanated from quite well to begin with. Uh, something like the Aggressor class Star Destroyer. Yeah, I've always liked the Aggressor class. Um, kind of. I, I liked it in the game partially, I mean that's partially biased because it was pretty OP. It was a very useful ship to have. Uh, but I always kind of liked it. I really like uh, El Ratty's version of it a lot. Um, but it's a fairly attractive ship. It's, you know, it's aggressive looking, which is, I guess, appropriate, given its namesake. Um, and does a good job looking like it's built in the same universe as a Star Destroyer, as it shares... Um, kind of a similar bridge tower configuration and shield bulbs or domes um, and has a kind of vaguely reminiscent Star Destroyer shape, you know, where it's larger in the back and gets kind of narrow as it goes forward. Um, and it's very forward fire focused. Let's see what the Ninfu's got here. Oh, you're playing with your um, your your little creatures. This was the turkey. It was juicy. Looks like a pretty good turkey. Casserole looks good. And and there's the decimated turkey. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Although to be fair, after eating the um, the ham. Uh, the the turkey at my parents' house didn't get eaten on all that much. I had a bit of it. I ate maybe a leg, but that was about it. Um, let me see. Is there anything else that I really need to do to this? Is there anything that stands out? I could probably add some antennas. Our antennas are a signature of mine. Love my antennas. You made the turkey. Okay, very good. People called the next day to see if there are leftovers. Well, there you go. Sounds like a success to me. Ah, approval of a, of a trained professional. Very good. All right. Um, what we're going to do is play around with maybe having these antennas swept back, perhaps. All right, I, th I think that's...
units. That's all right. But we're going to increase the size just a little bit. Otherwise, they kind of just get lost in the pixels. Because the anti-aliasing in these old games is kind of meh. So we'll do something kind of like that. And we're going to clean this all up later. Make the mesh really nice. I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm horrified to think of anyone who would stop by and see like this this horribly sloppy like like terribly made mesh and think that that's the final product. Like, no, 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 we got we got some work to do still. We're gonna make it nice and efficient. I I pride myself over how well constructed my meshes are. At least my my newer ones. Back way 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 when many 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 years ago, I used to be pretty bad, but. I had no idea what I was doing anyway, because I was just learning. But these days, a well-constructed mesh is very important to me. Um, 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 what's, you know what, I think these antennas need to be just a little bit. I think that that helps um, and I think most of the rest of the detailing that the ship's gonna have that we're gonna see in any significant way um, is going to be uh, in the texture Yes, yeah, so we'll probably get a single 1024 texture, is my imagine. Um, I am not sure whether or not I will mirror the ship for the texture. That'll double the texture space. Of course, it has its own disadvantages. Oh, it's Jovex. Hey, welcome. Glad to see you uh, stop by. Mesh is less important to you. Texture, lighting. But don't do games, films, TV. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an old habit, so... Uh, I mostly do these meshes for really old game engines. Like the old Alamo engine from... I think it's 2001, 2002. So I kind of have it ingrained in me where the polygon count quite matters. And um, these old engines with their archaic lighting systems and shaders or lack thereof would have a lot of problems with say Z fighting and overlapping faces and basically anything that wasn't perfect would render issues that you wouldn't see in say Unreal 4 or 5. So it's it's baked into me. I got to make them perfect. But yeah, at the modern engines or if you're just doing stuff for renders, you can get away with a lot more, which must be really nice. There's some modelers who make Star Wars ships and stuff just for like fancy renders and Oh, the things they can get away with, the, the level of detail they can achieve is so nice. And you're not bound to a 20-year-old game engine. But such is the way of things. If I was just making stuff for, say, Unreal 5, then uh, I'd probably be a bit looser. Although you, there are, that can come with its own problems, but you can get away with more, I think. You used um, an oven resistant bag to lock in the steam. Oh, okay, that's, I've never heard of that. Very interesting. Then use the last hour to remove it from the bag and let it sear the skin. Huh. 
That's cool. I'll have to try that. I've never thought of sealing in the turkey into anything. Or I, I'm sure that works on chickens too. I will put tinfoil over them sometimes. Or sometimes I'll pre-sear stuff to help lock in the moisture, but never put them in like a sealed bag or something. That's neat. I'll have to try that out. But yeah, I think I think we're good design-wise. I don't want to go overboard because again, small ship, and realistically, in game, it's it's probably going to be like like this big. And it's kind of hard to see um, the the details in 3ds Max, but yeah, probably probably around like that in game. So really, any more details than what we have would be overboard. We're mostly doing it for eye candy for. Uh, when people are doing cinematic viewing and when they get up close to look at things and take screenshots and stuff. But probably 90% of the time it'll be seen from about here. Of course, it depends on the mod. I'm, I'm not making it for anything in particular, just making it for the community to use as they see fit. And some mods have ships scaled larger and some have things scaled smaller relative to each other. Some mods try to be really realistic, so if you've got a big Star Destroyer, um, then a little tiny CR Corvette, CR-90, they'll make really, really tiny, so it's an appropriate scale relationship. Um, but of course, there's ships that are bigger than the Star Destroyer, so it's not the biggest thing on the screen, so the camera gets pulled back so they can encompass the larger stuff, and the small ships tend to get washed away in the background. But some mods um, do like hero scaling, or I'm just sure there's an appropriate term for it, where you exaggerate the scale of the smaller stuff so it doesn't get lost visually, even though it's technically out of scale with the world it's in. But yeah, we don't have enough time today because I got to go to the store in probably about half an hour, maybe, uh, and do make dinner. But probably tomorrow I'll go through and clean up the mesh. And we don't have to be too anal about things, but like, it's it's very inefficiently built because it's just a bunch of objects slapped together to more or less create the shape of what we're looking for. But there's a lot of unused faces and things that we need to get rid of. And there's a lot of things we can kind of weld together into single objects. And uh, that might take maybe half hour, 30, 45 minutes to do. And then, uh, then I'll throw it in Substance Painter and Photoshop and give it a give it a texture, and uh, that'll be fun. I like texturing stuff; it really adds a lot of life, especially with Substance Painter because I spent a lot of time building these like uh, default, well not default. I built Smart Materials, which is like a bunch of um, texture layers, color layers, and algorithms for how things are patterned and like ambient occlusion and dirt based on that and edgeware and all that. And so it's all built into the, a smart material that I can just slap on there and it does like 50% of the, the texture work for you immediately and it, it just bam, it brings something to life instantly. And then you go in and you can adjust the colors and draw stripes and panel lines and put in little uh, details in the normal map and stuff to, to really make it um, give it some life but slapping that initial smart material on there and, and seeing just everything get ambient occlusion and edge wear and, and all that just it's very satisfying Reynolds kitchen oven bags turkey sized for meats and poultry tender juicy meats I'll have to I'll have to give that a try but that sounds uh, very interesting, and I do like my chickens and turkeys to be juicy. Because, of course, who does not? You need to adjust the ship you made last week, the one you were doing all the drawings of. What are you going to change on it? It looked like it was coming together pretty good. Let's 
see how things look in orthographic. Sometimes I get caught up and uh, and I look at something from like the same perspective for the entire model and uh, and it's good to change the way you look at stuff. You might see things uh, pop out that need to be fixed or adjusted that you didn't see before or you might discover new shapes and things you like. So I think I modeled most of this from this like three quarters front on view or front side view but like what does it look like from the bottom right we've we've kind of played with it but we really haven't spent a lot of time looking at it from this angle And you notice little things, like maybe where this wing comes out, there probably could be like a little detail that just helps um, give you a little like extra layer so you don't have such a harsh transition. So like if we were to take a, I don't think we have any, oh yeah. Still got a basic square left. Take a shape like this, get rid of that. I think that I think that helps with the bottom. And the bottom also um, has a lot of geometry from the various hall segments connecting, but it doesn't really have any details worked into it. And that's probably because my reference image is from this forward three quarters view. Um, but on the reference image, you know, you've got these details here. You've got all this detail stuff along the top. And there's details I didn't add in, probably uh, mostly because uh, it's unneeded at this scale. But the bottom, of course, you can't see, so I didn't really add anything in there specifically. So we're left with just how things join together. Which can be a little awkward at times. I, I think that helps. But that being said, um, it is a machine of war, and oftentimes those are horribly ugly things. War machines don't got to be pretty. Like some some war machines have a certain beauty to them, uh, for sure. Like some fighter jets are really attractive. Like the Me two six two, the German um, jet fighter, absolutely. Gorgeous plane. Absolutely gorgeous plane. Thank you. Look at those lines. Look at that design language. Minus the like rocket pods or whatever they have on them, but absolutely gorgeous plane. Even though it was generally a you know purpose-built war machine, aesthetics really didn't have any any purpose in the design. It just ended up looking quite attractive. Then again, I suppose planes are easy to point out because they're supposed to be aerodynamic and that gives you a lot of curved, fluid shapes. But there are other things that turn out um, attractive, like uh, um, like the uh, like the Panther tank is uh, a fairly attractive tank as far as they go. in part because of its large forward swept hall panel or angled forward hall panel. 
but it's just kind of an attractive vehicle. Overall, it's got good, good solid lines. It's not too busy. It's not too sparse in its details. Generally, an attractive vehicle. It looks like what it's supposed to be. Like, like it looks like the epitome of what a main battle tank should be. Although it's kind of large for the time, it's more like a heavy battle, or heavy tank. But yeah. we'll excuse them for that. But yeah, no reason why war machines should look particularly attractive. Sometimes they do, but no reason for it as a as a requirement. So if we've got some ugly shape interactions, that's okay. I'm not trying to win any beauty contests. But anyway, uh, I I sort of rant in my tired delusions. Um, so what I need to do real quick is probably wrap the girlfriend's present before she gets back, because it did arrive, and um, figure out what I need from the store, and probably uh, start a load of laundry and stuff. So we're going to look into wrapping things up for the evening, but uh, we did good. I just intended for a short stream today, and uh, we managed to get our ship all designed out and, and put together. So we're at a great, great stopping point for that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look for somebody to raid on over to. Um, so what we can do, let's see if there's anyone doing any interesting 3D modeling, since that's what people are watching at the moment, kind of, sort of. Um, nope, 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 no. Nope, nope. Negatory. All right, I don't see anyone doing anything that is particularly interesting in 3D modeling. So, uh, but there is a guy who's playing Star Wars Empire at War, which is what I'm categorized at at the moment. So we can hop on over to him. Let me go check him out, see if he's a good guy. If I have any viewers left. If it's just an in player sticking around in here, then I might just shut things down. Depends on if there's any folks here. But here's the guy doing Empire at War, if anyone here is interested. He's um, very quiet. Sound effects. Yeah, you're still here. Of course Hold you are. A little bit so we can get the turret. I expected that much. But it says I only got two viewers, which is myself and you. Staffs have been taken at the of moment. Coming. All that's left is the damn droidicas. I don't think there's... Damn it. All right, but we'll go on, we'll go on over to him. Check him out, see if he's a nice guy. Seems all right at the moment. So anyway, thanks everybody who is here for stopping by and uh, chit-chatting, and we will we must finish the place. ship with the uh, mesh optimizations and the texturing. Um, this week, tomorrow or Wednesday, perhaps, probably. And we got lots and lots and lots of other models and stuff to do. So um, you're welcome to stop on by for that if you're interested in seeing some more modeling yes, and slash modding slash texturing spaceship stuff. 
So until then, we will raid on over to this guy and Crap. give him some support. It seems a little unfair that these are permanently mine, though. So we'll pull him up. He's got himself a couple of viewers. They're not taking down the structure, but they won't let me get any troops in. Alrighty, off we go. Oh, Garak, coming with a rate of two. Welcome in. Hello. Welcome into the stream, everybody. Uh, it's a name I do not recognize. May I ask where you came from? Are you a fellow Empire at War streamer? Or are you a um, fellow from like, a Discord that I wasn't aware of? How'd you find me, good sir? And thanks again for the raid. Appreciate it. Okay, let me pause this. It's actually like... Now that I left the Wookiees alone, let's keep getting them over there. I'll protect the base. Oh wait, there's a turret right there. Okay, let's take advantage of that. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm just doing some good old Republic at War. I want to do uh, the other one that they came out, uh, Fall of the Republic. I plan to do that one probably a little bit sooner. I just had a lot of nostalgia for this one, so I figured I'd come back and do this one first. Okay. Oh, that was all that was left. Okay, the Wookiees, like, must have wiped out everything else when they attacked their home. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. That eh, doesn't seem to matter. When the heck did they get a turret up? Stop that. Now that the fog has been lifted, let's... Ah, oh, damn it, they're... This, I was gonna say, let's build turrets foundation for later, but it would appear they won't do that. At least this will finish before the time runs out. There we go. So now that can continue to the third squad down for the factory and then worry about finance. Um, putting the Republic in the end of the game. It's really come along since I last played it. Oh, are they still working on it? I thought it was like all done, but I must have been must have been wrong. Okay, so how to uh, direct any unit that has the AI keyword, which means during the activation phase, the horizon. Okay, once that last vendor finishes getting built, I'm gonna finally take the battle up to my Guido Unilist, and for get that huge income boost. That is what's gonna save our base here. Von Cal oh, I knew this would happen. Hey, thanks for the follow, Karak. Karak. Car 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 Is that how you say Karak? 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 Karak, Karak? Oh, no. Are they sending what I think they're sending? Oh, this is going to be tough. They're sending... Yep. This will be tricky. It brought the malevolence. Okay, the only chance I'm gonna have at surviving this battle is I have to take out the special weapon. We're gonna pull a Clone Wars here. I'm gonna send all my bombers in a all-out swarm because I cannot let I cannot let it drop. I can't let it use this weapon. Okay, starting that way. So you attack this side first. B-19s, you be their escort. Get over there. Desperate times call for dish measures. Oh, boy. Is it not going to fire the weapon? Hang on, let's play this smart. I don't need all those squads attacking it. So let's take this chunk here. Nope, wait. 
I only want four. Okay, we'll do these three. You're gonna take out the shields. And then the others are gonna attack the special weapon. Then at least we can start taking out its cannons. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. That's why the VI teams are here to protect them. Protect them. Crap. They're not gonna make it. There's too many things. Too many fighters. Okay, they haven't fired the weapon yet, so that's not the end of the world. Oh, uh, this is gonna be tricky. It's just sitting there. Now at least I see what I'm up to up against. Jaja, I was like having like a grin his way. I'd be modeling every hour of the day. Oh, are you a model? That's awesome. What do you model in? Are you like just, um, I don't know. I'm not like super educated in the modeling like business, but are you like a magazine model or like a model for, I don't know. What do you, what do you model for? <laughs> I'm not even sure how to distinguish one model from the other or if there even is a difference. Uh, of course you go for the shields on my Venator first, you fuckers. The malevolence is completely contempt though, so I might actually be able to do something here. Mod model. Oh! <laughs> okay. I got you now. <laughs> when I first think modeling, I think like actual. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. I apologize. I, I'm not a big. Um, I'm not a big game dev. Currently three model off. E oh, do you? That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a big game dev person. I just like playing the games. So, I didn't. I didn't even know that was a term <laughs> that you use until uh, you told me otherwise. Okay, this vendor is like so out of the way, and it's not being helpful at all. Easy. You're about to lose your shields by what? Oh, this resurgent over here. You're in range now to hit him, I think, so let's do that. We finally held the... Okay. Let's pause for a second. I want to play this extra cautiously. Let's go back to my previous strategy I did on the last time I did this. Let's have, um, go after the hangers on these things. Uh, we'll have them do... We'll have them do this one first. Then back here and around. How'd you lose your shields? Whatever. Malevolence is inching slightly closer. Something blew up there. I have no upgrades that I can use on the station. Everything's all fully buffed. Oh, that's right. I have uh, Arc 170s. Hey, you guys go after that. Okay, but you got that one? Or actually, no, you guys are supposed to do this one. Just take out that one real quick. Fighters are the main threat right now. Those are all shielded up and good to go. Would y'all be interested in a tournament for Empire War? Ooh. Um. Maybe. That sounds interesting. Are we talking like skirmishes or are we talking like um, Galactic Conquest? Like, how would that work? Fifteen years ago, ah, uh, yeah. I I mostly play for casual fun, but I must admit I'm a competitive guy, so the 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 fact that there is a way to competitively play this game would interest me. I probably wouldn't do very good, but sounds interesting, definitely. I'm out of fighters. It is simply up to my frigates now. And my point defense cannons. Okay, well at least we have another frigate. Put them over there. We still have fighters coming out of the 
That might have been my first mistake, was sending all my fighters in a wave against... And I won't have anybody to charge the malevolence with. I'll have to just bust through the shield deal fashion way. Which is not a good sign. Just too many fighters. Chaos trains in the community of Discord. Oh, do they? Okay. I'll definitely have to take a look then. Oh, shit, they fired the weapon. Oh, no. Oh, crap. There it goes. Well, the weapons are still on, but shields are gone. Crap. Finally, it's making its move. It is... Uh, this is not what I need right now. One Acclimator shield survives somehow. Damn it, even the Acclimator... Okay. Okay. Can you guys, like, spawn on this side of the thing where I need you instead of having to have me pull you all the way over? Go and give a few seconds. Got the same folks are playing the old girl, though. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate the classics. I'm a nostalgic kind of guy. Oh, if only I could get rid of these fighters. If only. Oh, hey. Wait. What happened to your shields? Why did your shields go? Why did your shields go? Wait a minute. Let me take out your engines, because you're turning around for some reason. Oh, you bitch bastard. You're going after that. You missed. Oh, you're attacking that? Oh, the one that still has shields left. That makes sense. Okay, the Vulture Droids are finally doing shit. This guy literally just has engines left. He can't harm it at all. They don't make him like they used to. I agree. Okay, I don't know where these new fighters came from. I'm not going to question it, though. Shields are recovering. Oh my gosh, we might actually pull off a victory here. We might actually defeat the Malevolence in a battle where I was vastly outnumbered. Alright, Karak, thanks for the lurk, bro. You have a good one. Enjoy your trip to the store and the other things making dinner, you just saying. Forget a group of arc.